Two Rivers Charter School. It's so nice to have you in my studio. I'm Deborah Frazier, the author and illustrator of Miscellaneous a Vocabulary Disaster. And I received some questions from you all in honor of your own vocabulary fashion show, which I just wish I could be there to see. So I will be getting photographs of your costumes, so please do your very, very best so that I will get to see your shining creativity all the way here in Minneapolis, Minnesota, where I live and work. And I'm having you today in my studio, which is where I make all of my pictures and do my writing and printing and can quietly work here. I'm on the corner of the street, University and Raymond, and it's very busy and crazy outside because they're building a new light rail here between Minneapolis and St. Paul. I want to look at your questions that you've sent me. And how do I look at words in new ways is one of the questions. And I have to say, what happens is I want to tell a story. And I write that story down, and the first time I write it, it's usually in kind of boring words. And as I read it over and over again, I realize, oh, that doesn't have to be the sun is shining. It could be the sun sent up towering flames. And slowly but surely, I make every single little bit shine in a way that you can see a picture in your head when you read it. That's what my goal is. Now, how does nature inspire what I do? You can see that I love being outside. And if you visited my website, you can see that I love to go paddling and canoeing and walking on the beach and collecting things and looking at the world and taking pictures all the time and all of these things, I try to figure out, how can I describe this in mere words? Just today, I was walking to the post office and the wind had caught the leaves in this way that made them just shimmer, shimmer and shake, shimmer and shake. I thought, how could I describe this in words so that someone could see that picture in their head? That's what I'm trying to do. Now, one of your sixth graders asked me whether or not I would want to make a miscellaneous kind of book for middle schoolers. But to tell you the truth, I think that the picture book is a book that's made for all ages. It doesn't matter if you're three or you're 13 or you're 33 or you're 103. I'm looking to make a picture book that answers some longing that we have in all across our lives, no matter what your age is. And so for me, a book like Miscellaneous really is for any age because it's about what happens when we make a mistake and how so often that mistake opens a new window into a way that we can see something completely different. It happens to me constantly in my studio, just constantly. Now there's a question here about did miscellaneous help my daughter become a better speller and lover of words? Well, you know, this is a true story. And my daughter really did think miscellaneous was Miss Alanius. And she really did think it was the woman on the spaghetti box. So, how would you feel if your mother took a mistake you made and turned it into a book? Well, at first she was a little bit embarrassed. But now, since she has seen all these people dress up in costumes and turn this story into this amazing creative leap, she loves it. She loves seeing every single picture of costumes. And now that she's all grown up and she lives in Berlin, Germany, where she's an artist, I always send her the pictures of you and your costume. So remember that. It will be going all the way across the ocean for her to see. Now, Math and vocabulary. How would I write a book that weaves those all together? Now that is a big challenge. And I think that's a challenge you could do. But there is a wonderful book called 1 plus 1 equals 5 by David La Rochelle. He's a friend of mine from here in Minneapolis. Go look that book up and you will see that an ingenious book has been made by him. Now, I thought that since you were in my studio, you should see what I'm working on next. And you might be wondering, why in the world are all these blue jeans behind me? I'm not a blue jean salesman, but I'm working on a book called I'm Spike, Ugliest Dog in the Universe. And Spike is really the story about what is beautiful and how we really can't judge a book by its cover. 
So I thought, after thinking and thinking and taking pictures and collecting things in my journal, how could I tell the story of Spike, ugliest dog in the universe? I thought, blue jeans, old worn blue jeans, the kind that your grandmother might say, you're going to wear that to school, and you might say, these are my most beloved jeans you have ever, ever seen in your life, all ripped up in the knees and the pockets. So how could I make a story out of blue jeans? I thought I'd show you this picture. This is the opening page. My owner entered me in the ugliest dog in the universe contest. I won. It was awful. So you can see how I've used the blue jeans and the holes in them to leave places for the words. And you can see in the end papers where you get to enter the book. That's a picture book. Look what I've done here. I've made all them all into patches and put them together. This is for the exit of the book. So you can see one last time what those beautiful worn patches look like. And I now have 123 pairs of blue jeans. I go over here. I look for what I need. Oh, I need a light blue one. Oh, this one looks good. Oh, look at this beautiful hole right there in the knee. How could I use that in the making of this book? So you see, this is where it all starts, in my messy, messy studio in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And to all the students at Two Rivers, I want to say goodbye, have a wonderful vocabulary fashion show, and I look forward to seeing every single costume in a picture sent to me. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Bye.